What is going on guys? We are back playing some more surviving with immersive engineering. Now today guys, we're going to be having fun making some windmills around the base. And along with that, we're actually going to be going zip lining. Now it's actually not really zip lining. It's kind of the immersive engineering equivalent of zip lining, uh, but I still think it's going to be really fun and actually quite useful. So to start things out, I did say that we're going to be messing around with windmills. Now this is kind of like a beginning form of power generation, but surprisingly enough, as you're going to see when we start crafting, it, it does take a good amount of resources to make, which is a little weird for me because um, looking at how much power you're going to get from it, it doesn't actually seem worth it. In my opinion, I would either suggest sticking with water wheels, which are my personal favorite, or just thermoelectric generators. But of course, because I want to eventually go over everything in this entire mod, we're going to be doing windmills today. So uh, typically, you know, I open up my inventory and there's a bunch of different things in here that are already crafted and I just am like, oh yeah, look at how many heavy engineering blocks we're gonna need for today and how expensive it is. Well, I do have a bunch of resources in here, but they're not actually crafted into stuff yet. And the reason behind that is because uh, I've been getting requests to actually do some crafting on camera, and because there's a lot of crafting to do today, I thought it would be a great time to actually do it on camera and show you guys kind of what you're gonna need for this and all that. So I hope you guys will bear with me if you typically don't like seeing the crafting on camera, but it should not be too painful. So we're gonna be sitting over here for a couple minutes, so I would just say to hunker down with a snack while we start crafting all this stuff. Um, and you know what, actually, before we do that, we should probably look in the engineer's manual and just go over the, um, the things that we're gonna be using today. So if we come over to power, wires, and generators, we can look at power generation. Okay, so you got the kinetic dynamo here, which is gonna be used for both the windmill and it's gonna be used for the water wheels. And you can see that right here. And essentially it's just these things rotate and then create power. So if we flip over, you can see we have right here the windmill, which actually is not that expensive to create. Take some iron and this is just going to take some treated wood planks and treated wood sticks. So uh, it's pretty much just an easy way of getting power, but it still does require that you have creosote. Um, now it does state that it will go faster when it's raining or storming, which does make sense. And also the higher the elevation, the more power generation you're going to get. One thing I want to say is that I do not have the exact numbers on me right now, but I will link in the description, the Wikipedia page or the wiki page or whatever you want to call it, that tells you the numbers based on the elevation and you know, if it's raining or not for the windmill, just because uh, they're a little bit more obscure. It's not perfectly rounded off numbers. There's, I believe it's like one is 11 RF per tick. And then, you know, when it's raining, it's 14 and all that stuff. I think that's at uh, 100 elevation. So um, I will link that in the description though, but you know, then we have the water wheel. And right after that, we have the improved windmill. So the improved windmill is what we're actually going to be building today. And as you can see, it's a lot more expensive. It requires twice as many blades. The blades are going to need cloth on them, which comes from the industrial hemp fiber. And it also is going to require one piece of steel. So of course, looking at that, you can probably tell that it's going to be a little bit more effective at generating power. Uh, just through looking at it, you can see because it has more blades, it would catch more air and thus spin faster. And because it has cloth, which of course would catch more air along with it, it should be able to get a significantly larger amount of power. And it actually gets twice as much power generation as the windmill. So uh, just take the numbers that you're gonna see for the windmill and double it. And that's pretty much what you're gonna get. So it is a little bit better, but honestly, I still don't think that what we're gonna get is gonna be that great. I just think it's gonna be fun and look cool. So that's why we're gonna do it. And that is pretty much it. So now we need to actually get to crafting all this. So the improved windmill is going to require eight of these improved windmill blades. And if we go to these, you can see it's gonna require um, eight windmill blades then just regular. And then you're gonna need four tough fabrics per one, which means you're gonna need a total of 32 tough fabric and each of these is going to require eight industrial hemp fiber. So it's actually pretty expensive when it comes to the amount of uh, tough fabric and industrial hemp fiber and all that that you're gonna need. So I do have a bunch of industrial hemp fiber here and we can go through and actually make all this. And I believe I said we're gonna need 32 of these. So that is a lot of industrial hemp fiber. Luckily, we do kind of need to start getting rid of it. So there we go. Now I already made the eight windmill blades, but we can go through that and see that it requires uh, a decent amount of treated wood. So it requires three treated wood planks and then four treated wood sticks. So essentially it's gonna require five or no, five, seven treated wood planks per, right? Yeah, no, 
Do those make, I can't tell, do these make two or four? Okay, so they do make four. For some reason, I thought they made two for a second. So it's gonna require five treated wood planks per, so 40 total. So that's actually not that bad. The industrial hemp fiber is really where you're gonna run into kind of a backup if you don't have a good way of getting it. And running around hitting things to try and get industrial hemp fiber is not really that effective. The only reason I have a ton of it is from the automated farm. So if you are looking to get that and haven't seen the automated farm video that I have set up, you should probably go check that out. So now we can start actually making these. We can get all eight of them right there. And then the last thing we need is just going to be a piece of steel, which we already have, of course. So now we have our improved windmill. All of that just to get one thing that's probably gonna get us the same amount as a water wheel. Unfortunately, uh, we could make it better, but we're not gonna be shooting it up to, you know, 200 elevation. Unfortunately, I just want it for looks a little bit because we're not really needing a bunch of power generation right now. So. Next thing that we need to make is going to be the kinetic dynamo because that's what you're gonna be hooking this thing up to. Okay guys, so unfortunately I was short one piece of iron. So I went off camera, I got the iron and I made the kinetic dynamo here. So now we have everything that we're gonna need to actually get power from the improved windmill. So we got the improved windmill, kinetic dynamo, which will hook up, then we can attach the wire connector to it and run that power wherever we need it to go. So that setup is completely done and we'll be able to you know, work on that a little bit later. But what I wanna do now is start getting things set up to actually do what I was saying was zip lining. Now it's not actually zip lining, but it's essentially that you're going to use this tool called the engineer skyhook and we're gonna make that in a second, but it's called a new form of travel. And essentially what you're gonna do is hook this on at like a connection point to a cable, wire, anything like that. And you'll be able to go along it. And you know, you can go along horizontal planes, you can go up mountains, down mountains, you can cross, you know, from one mountain to another, anything like that you can, you can use this for. So uh, it was suggested that I mess around with it a little bit because I'm kind of living on a mountainous area. So I thought, you know what, let's do it. Let's have some fun with it. And it's actually relatively cheap. So I do have the steel cable that we're gonna be using for this, mainly because I accidentally made steel cable a while back instead of making high voltage cables. So it's actually gonna have a purpose now, and you can see it says for decoration purposes only will not transmit power. You can still use it for this, even though that's like moving on it is not technically decoration purposes, but we can still use it. So we're gonna finish making the engineer sky hook. We need to make the uh, mechanical component. Let's get in here. And then we can make this super easy, super cheap. Now all we need to do is actually get what is called a connector. Oh, whoops, that is not how you spell it. Oh, that okay. So um, you can see that obviously we've got the wire connectors and then you come over to this one and it's called the structural cable connector. So this is where we're going to be running our uh, steel cable from. And you can only get onto the steel cable using the sky hook at a connector point. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we are going to need to make a couple of these steel rods and we can make the steel fences. I probably have steel fences sitting around somewhere, but I'm just too lazy to go find them. So we now have that and I will just dump this back in here. And the one last thing that I wanna make to see if we can use and we should be able to use it is going to be, it's the wooden, right here, the wooden post. So we need to make some of the treated wood fences. And I guess we, we probably want a little bit more than two. We'll go with like four-ish, I think. That should be good. Uh, let's get the fences, some more fences. Okay, so there we go. And we can just dump these back in here. My inventory is getting really full because we got a bunch of stuff for today. And we can make four of them. So there we go. So we can get all this stuff in my inventory and we can head outside and start messing around with the windmills and with the skyhook. So I have kind of flattened off that mountain up there. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it used to be a little bit, oh my gosh, what are you doing out here, friend? What are you doing? Get out of here. Okay, so it used to be a little bit more rounded and I went up there and you know I was like, oh, it's snowy. It must be a good elevation because of course that is a great indication of when something is high up. It's a little bit over 100 uh, in elevation. I think it's like 115. So it's not the best power generation we're gonna get from this. Like I said, I will link in the description where you can find the like actual chart based on power generation. But we're gonna be putting it up there just because it's a little bland up there. And also because I really wanna use these to go up a mountain. So eventually I will connect these back to our base, which I'm realizing looks really gross right now from the outside. But we can, let's start like right, 
let's start like right here. So let's throw this thing down. Now I don't know, do we want to extend this and put that right there? Maybe, okay. So let's do that and then let's come up here and I assume these can only go 16. I haven't really read anywhere how far they can go exactly, but most of the cables can only go 16. So uh, I think that would be a good assumption. So let's keep it, I wanna keep it to the outside if possible. So let's throw that there and let's see if we can hook these together and get our first glimpse at the sky hook. So it's linking from here to there. And now we right click on it and we hold it and it brings us all the way up here and then kicks us off. Now I have not tried connecting multiple of these, but you do need to jump on at a connection point. You can't click on somewhere, or at least you should not be able to click on like right in the middle here, I don't believe. Yeah, you can't click on like right here. Uh, you need to click on like at a connection point. I guess this is close enough to the connection point to actually click on there, but uh, it does need to be at a connector. So we can bring this up right, maybe like right here. Let's see if that, that might be a little bit too far. I'm not sure. And oh, you can rotate these. That's awesome. That's so cool. You can like spin them. That's sick. Okay. So we'll, we might mess around with that in a little bit. Like we can, we can rotate this one to look right here. Okay. That's cool. So let's go down here and I want to see how these interact now. If, if it automatically kicks you off and you need to get back on it or what. So you go up one, keep going. Oh, and then you can keep going. Sweet. And then it kicks us off here. Awesome. So we can use the very last one to get right up here. And I think we can do it. Let's do it like this right here and bring it out to the side and put that there and connect it. So there we go. So we should be able to get all the way up here without even walking because we're super lazy. And now we are at an elevation of 110. So we got a nice view of everything up here. Oh yes, very nice view. Uh, not a huge platform, but you know, until we actually build something up here, like an actual structure that's gonna hold the windmill, which eventually I'll probably do off camera. For now, we're probably just gonna be putting it on a bunch of stone bricks, as I think so, at least. So I think we want the windmill to look out this way so that we can get a good view of it from down there at the base. So let's jump up a few, and I know this is gonna look really bad. Like, trust me, I know. Uh, let me get some food real quick and eat this before we start building the atrocious looking windmill. So we're going to come over here with the kinetic dynamo and we're going to throw this thing down as per usual. Now we can break this and we should be able to just slap the improved windmill down on this thing. I think this might not be high enough up. Actually, there might be something else I'm doing wrong here, but let me just, let me make sure that we get high enough up here. We can go even, we can go even higher now, guys. Let's go even higher. So let's get that down right there and then let's, come back here. Oh, there we go. Windmill for the land. Oh, and it's already spinning. Awesome. So it looks like that needs to be really high up there because this thing is really big. I didn't realize it was so big. Um, but yeah, so we now have the windmill. It looks like it's spinning pretty fast. That actually looks really fast. So the main thing I'm curious about is how it looks down at the base. And one thing I realized is I actually don't have anywhere for the power to go right now. But one thing that we could try doing uh, that might actually be really cool is this. So let's let's try this. Let's kick this out this side and let's throw the medium voltage wire connector right there. And we're gonna have to get up there to attach this. Let's get up here. We should be able to attach it out the back of these. I typically do and there's no issue, you know. Huh, I've never actually tried doing this. That's so weird, I didn't realize you could click Interesting. So I think we can pull it out the back of this. Um, obviously, the thing is on the top, but I usually pull it out the back of these. So uh, let's do that. And let's get a wire right here. So we'll get the medium voltage wire and we will hook it up to this. And now we could run that all the way down. Now, one thing I'm like realizing right now is I think we can actually use these. So we actually don't need the steel cable right here. Uh, we can use the power lines to connect it if we really wanted to. But I think this looks really cool like this. And, you know, we can go and we can rotate this so it's like, yeah, facing the correct direction. So I think that's actually really cool. And then, of course, you know, we can just come down here. 
oh man, I put it on that side. No, 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 we're gonna have to, this one, why did I put that one on that side? No, 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 it needs to go over here. Okay, so this one is gonna go right over here and this one is going to go right over there. Okay, and then we can get the actual cables out and we can get both of these hooked up here and go back and wire them up here. So much work for so very little power. So it's like that, and then we can do it one last time, and I'm running out of the medium voltage cable, so we're not actually gonna be able to make it all the way back down, but it's still gonna look really cool in my opinion. So we can link that there. Too far away from the previous connection. Oh my gosh, this is such bad news, guys. Okay, so I guess I'll have to do something about that. Uh, it looks like this thing can probably go 32. The steel can probably go 32 because it's more structurally sound than the electrum or whatever we use for the medium voltage wire coil. But we'll have it like that, and then I guess I'll have to flip this one to the other side too eventually. But let's take a trip. Let's, let's see what it looks like from down here, and then we can take a trip back up there. And I think that looks pretty cool. Yeah. I actually like how that looks a lot. Um, and eventually I will put that in an actual structure so it looks like a real windmill. But let's take a trip up there. Let's get the engineer's sky hook out. And let's take a trip up and verify that this actually works. It's not super fast. I'll give it that. It's not the fastest thing ever. And it looks a little bit glitchy while you're going up. But it is still fun. Oh gosh. Dismount. Dismount. Okay, there we go. Oh my gosh, why is it? It's trying to connect us to that one. I want to go to this one. That might be a problem. If it, if, it seems like it's got kind of like an area. Like if you think a bubble around it and you can click like anywhere, kind of. So clicking on this one, registered, clicking on the side one. So that's a little bit weird. But uh, I think that's going to be it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know there was a lot of crafting and a lot of just kind of like messing around. But I actually had a lot of fun doing it, just kind of testing things out, seeing what was right. But I hope you guys found the video useful. If you found it useful in any way or just enjoyed, you know, me messing around on here, feel free to give it a like as it helps me out a lot. And as always, if you have any questions or feedback in general, feel free to post it in the comments. I know I always say this, but you guys have been phenomenal with the feedback. And you guys also caught me on a little mistake that I made on one of them and kind of like ripped me a new one the other night about not connecting the water wheels properly, which I did connect them off camera. Do not worry if you didn't read that comment. They're connected properly off camera. But um, yeah, so you guys have been great with feedback and I thank you guys for that. So stick to it and I will talk to you guys later.